You're watching The Laura Flanders Show. We're still here at the Progressive Caucus Center Strategy Summit in Baltimore, Maryland, with a very special guest. Mayor Carmen Yulene Cruz from San Juan, Puerto Rico, is with us. You're familiar with her on television in the days after the storms, Maria especially, hit the island. The situation there is still terribly dire more than six months after the storm. So let's start with that. Mayor Yulene, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Let's hear the bad news first. It's been six months. It's been six months. People often ask, how are you doing? And you know, you want to answer with a certain sense of hope. And you want to say, we're doing fine, but we're not doing fine. Every two to three weeks, there's a total power outage. We're about 800,000 to a million people all of a sudden go back to square one. 500,000 people are estimated to have left all of Puerto Rico and come into the United States. And this is horrible. Uh, suicide rates have increased by 55%. Suicide rates in Puerto Rico? Have increased by 55%. What does that look like on the ground? What does that mean? People lose hope, people lose faith, people um, see family members that need electricity to literally breathe and uh, they have to, it, it takes a, a toll on having to run a generator, a small generator, uh, the noise, the smell, um, the, the impotence of knowing, uh, nobody, nobody knows, you know. The governor says one thing, the Army Corps of Engineers says another thing. Uh, they are at odds with each other and there's, a, there's an old uh, Hindu phrase that says when elephants fight, the grass is the only one that loses. It's the people that don't have the information uh, that we have. FEMA was not good uh, at the beginning. They, they have a very good diesel program, which runs perfectly. But, you know, they changed the rules. Uh, first of all, it was like, you give us a projection and we'll give you half of it. Then it was, well, give us a projection and we'll give you half of it, but only if it's up to a million dollars. So cities like San Juan, where we uh, put $21 million towards being ready, as ready as you can be, uh, we're still owed $11.2 million. And that may not be a lot of money, but we haven't been able to do right by our employees and, and pay them the overtime. Uh, and also uh, pay them uh, their, their Christmas bonus because the money that we had in store for that, we had to use towards uh, ensuring that we had enough medicine and food and water. Um, so, so things are very touch and go. Americans may think because their heart is, has been so, <coughs> you know, as bad as President Trump has been, the American people have been um, generous and brave. I started getting envelopes with a dollar bill from a kid in Ohio or five dollars from people in Harvey, um, AFL-CIO workers from all different unions in the United States, including SEIU. 320 of them went to Puerto Rico for two weeks. We, we um, hosted them in San Juan. They slept in cots and used their vacation and their comp time in order to be there and help not only people in San Juan, but in 34 different uh, communities outside of San Juan. Uh, and, and it was unthinkable that they could get to places where the U.S. government was saying, we have logistical issues and we can't access. You know, you have a guy, a guy that went, or a couple of guys that went up to the moon. Um, so how, how, how hard can the logistics be in a, in, in a island 100 miles long and 35 miles wide? So how do we turn this moment into a, or how are you turning it, are you turning it into a new direction, a, a place of power? Is there, is there, in a sense, there's something to be said for getting out of denial. You, you said on the speech, it's like we can no longer hide behind our pina coladas and our beautiful beaches. Yeah. And, and you said we cannot be sacrificing health for wealth. We got to put health before wealth. We got to put education before discrimination. We got to put love before hate. And they seem like simple terms. You know, it's like common sense, which is the least common of the senses sometimes. But somehow the human spirit overcomes. But we don't want to just overcome. We want to not have people oh, in this we, situation. No, we, we don't. <laughs> I, I, I say we don't want to survive. We want to thrive. 
How right. do we do that? So first of all, you have to start looking at life from every other point of view uh, besides your own. That, that's number one. Number two, you, you, you do like the Marines. You improvise, you adapt, you overcome. You know that the failure is not an option. Mm -hmm. And you know that you have to transform and change rather than rebuild and reconstruct. So we look at the way things were and we change it and, and we make it better. It's not gonna be perfect. So you don't let perfection get in the way of action. Do you have time? I mean, you would like to start, the, you would like to have the grid be a different kind of grid. You would like to have the economy be different. Do, yeah. you have, do you have time to do that kind of transformation, not just survival? We have to fix the plane while it's flying. We have to do what, uh, Houston, we have a problem. What was it, Apollo 13? Somebody was on the ground saying, give me everything they have to work with, and you know, I'm gonna make it happen, right? So, so we have to do both things. We, we have to walk forward, but we have to think way in advance. Uh, and, and that's not difficult, you know. Humankind have done it all, all throughout history. So give us an example. You've got the privatizers chomping at the bit to privatize your grid, to, to buy up your schools, turn them from public to charter. And we have the central government helping them do that. The central government of Puerto Rico is helping them do that. Why? Because they're putting forward an, an agenda that is not progressive because he's using the pain for somebody else's gain. And, and we have to make sure that we show a different way and then we show that things work in a different way and in a different realm and in a different environment and that we, we start rebuilding homes but making sure that they are more stable than they were before. 83 days before hurricane season begins and we have about 500,000 homes in Puerto Rico that need total transformation. So it's very difficult, you don't give up. You don't give up. You, every day, you make sure you take a step forward and no step backwards. But on the question of what you're up against, the privatization of the grid especially, talk about the motivations of those who want to take over the electrical system of Puerto Rico. One would think that profit is, is one of it. But, but I, you know, I, I hate to say this, but I think it's more of a control. Essential services everywhere in the world are about access to uh, a platform for equality, which is why I oppose privatization of essential services. In fact, the United Nations has said that access to essential services is critical to human rights. So we're talking about our human rights crises, about our human rights issues. Um, and it's just a feeding frenzy, and, and we have to stop it. And how do you stop it? You come to forums like this and you make sure that you engage people. You make sure that you tell the good people of the United States that, uh, you, you know, don't, don't, don't look at everything they show you and think it's the right way. Um, make sure that you do what you do best and that you get well informed. We continue to inform people, but most Americans, oh, I saw it in the room, when I said $4.9 billion of loan, we haven't gotten one cent, people started looking at themselves. You know, you think that a loan that was approved late November, early December, we would have gotten the money we need it now, right? Mm -mm. And now they're asking us to use some of that money to pay hedge funds and to pay the debt. So I'm thankful to Nidia Velasquez and the other 49 other humans that have seen that, uh, somebody's pain cannot be somebody else's gain, and have said not one cent of that should go to uh, making payments to the hedge funds. Uh, you know, not on, not on our watch. We have to make sure that the right thing is done, and the right thing cannot be a worse devastation than Maria, which would be to take away our ability to think that we deserve to be treated with respect. The point that you made about the price of electricity, the fees that Puerto Ricans are used to pay. Oh, that, that, the governor actually said that on February 15th in New York City. Somebody asked him, Governor, um, why would anybody want to invest? And he said, oh, because Puerto Ricans, and I'm paraphrasing, are used to paying such a high cost for energy 
that basically you could lower it but not share that with the Puerto Rican people and make a killing. Well, with friends like that, we don't need any enemies, do we? So what can people do to help you now? If, if you needed the emergency relief of people feeding and caring and, and, and getting people to safety, what's the equivalent with respect to emergency relief from the privatizers? We're coming to a midterm election. Um, 27 million Latinos did not vote. Yikes, you know, get off your couch and vote, right? Register, organize, and vote. And make sure that the real America is shown in those midterm elections. And if push comes to shove, and if the only thing that happens is that we pull the rug from under President Trump so that he doesn't have all the power, let's do it. Let's dare to be fearless and change the world. You got it. Thank you so much, Mayor Yulin Cruz. We'll have more information about what you can do and how you can connect with this work at our website. That's lauraflanders.org. Thanks.